guys in this video i'm going to be explaining sap1 computer using a online web based uh, hardware de description software called circuitverse and uh, this is how it looks on circuitverse this is a uh, real implementation on the software now uh, an sap computer is basically a simple as possible computer it does simple tasks like adding and subtracting numbers from each other now um what better way is there to understand this than by taking an example okay this is the example we're going to be taking our example is 5 plus 11 minus 6 these are the various steps these are the various steps that will be uh, followed during the execution of this uh, example um these these are the instructions in the mnemonics form and this is how uh, we pre-program our rom so as to uh, compute the answer for this example now um each step one two three four the ones given here each of these steps is performed in six cycles which are called t states they're called they're so named like t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 and um, i'll be showing them to you now on circuitverse as you can see now um, initially the clock uh, the whole computer is reset such that the program counter over here shows stores the data 0000, zero, zero, zero. now in the first state in the first cycle which is t1 the data in the program counter is transferred to the um mar as we can see here everything's already set to zero hence we won't be able to see it here exactly so in the first cycle the data from the program counter is transferred into the mar when this happens the data stored in this location 000 location in our rom as we have pre-computed is uh, stored in the rom like as you can see here at 000 we've stored the data 8 and this is what is dip shown here in the rom that is what is coming as the output from the rom now in the t2 state the value in the program counter is incremented so that that value is used for the next state which is the second state you can see here the has been incremented now in the t3 state the value stored in the rom is transferred into the instruction register this this we can see now when i'm pulsating the clock over here like this is what i'm doing the data has come into the instruction register at the same time when this happens the most the four most significant bits of the instruction register are transferred into the controller sequencer over here now as you can see the controller sequencer generates various signals now these signals are generated based on the operation being performed as you can see here 0000 is associated with the load operation 0001 is associated with the add operation 0010 is associated with the subtract operation 1110 is associated with the out operation and 1111 is associated with the halt operation so now this was the t3 state and hence these signals are generated based on 000 which is the load operation now these signals will help us perform um, operations and steps in the uh, coming three uh, states which are t4 t5 t6 now the first three states which we've just shown here t1 t2 t3 are common for all the states and t4 t5 t6 are slightly different or maybe different for the remaining operations okay now for the load operation the t4 state the four least significant bits here like these one zero 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 over here are moved to the mar we will see this now you can see one zero 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 has come into the mar and correspondingly the value of the rom has changed this is at the eighth location in our rom as we have programmed our rom five is stored that is in accordance with our example here as first we are going to be loading 5 ok so now as you can see 5 has been stored in the ROM in the T5 state of the load operation 
th this value stored in the ROM is transferred to the accumulator over here. You'll be seeing this now. So you can see five has come here in the accumulator and the value five stored in the accumulator. The T6 state in the um, load operation is a dummy state, nothing happens. Okay, now moving to the next step, which is add 9H. Now the first three cycles for this are the same as um, the load operation as we've discussed before. So as you can see here, as I'm doing this, the uh, value of the program counters come into MAR and the ROMs values correspondingly change. The program counters value has been incremented by one. The ROMs value has been moved to the instruction register and the controller sequencer and the appropriate signals are generated. Here 0001 is associated with addition as I've mentioned before. Now the T4 state for the add operation, subtract operation and the load operation as discussed before are the same. Where the least four least significant bits of the instruction register are transferred to the MAR and the ROMs value changes accordingly. You can see here the MAR value has changed and the ROMs value has also changed to 11, which in our example is what we want to add to 5 as we can see over here. Now in the T5 state, the value in the ROM is transferred to the B register over here. Now this is like a buffer a register where this value is stored so that it, it has to be added or subtracted based on the operation if it's add or subtract. As we can see here, 11 has come into the B register over here. Now, in the T, as soon as the, the value comes into the B register, actually, the value in the accumulator and the value stored in the B register are added and stored in the ALU, which is the adder subtractor right over here. Now in the T6 state, which is the last state, the value stored in the adder subtractor is transferred to the accumulator. As we can see here, we've got in 16 over here. Now we move on to the next step, which is the subtract step. In the subtract step, as you know, the first three states are the same. I'm going to skip through them very quickly. Right. So now 6 is stored in the ROM, we come to the T4 state. Now the T5 state, the value of the ROM will be transferred into the B register just as in the add subtract, in the, in the add operation. You can see 6 has come here. Now the only difference uh, from add and subtract is that a different signal is a, the SU signal over here is an enable for the subtract it becomes high when this happens uh, instead of adding in the alu subtraction is performed and it's stored over there now again in the t6 state the result in the alu is transferred into the accumulator as you see here 10 has come here now we're moving on to the out step in the out step the first three states are the same we can see uh, in the instruction register, we have this. And in the controller sequencer, we have the number associated with out, which is 1110. Now, the T4 state for out is different. In the T4 state of out, the value already stored in the accumulator is transferred to the output register and is displayed in the display. You can see here now. 10 has come into the output register and is also displayed here. Now, the T5 and T6 states of uh, the out operation are dummy states as we can see here. Now we've come to the final uh, operation which is the halt operation. The halt operation as we know the first three states are the same. You can see program counters value has come into the MAR and the corresponding value in the ROM. Now the program counters value is incremented and uh, the ROM's value will be transferred into the instruction register. As we can see, the controller sequencer has now the value 1111. Now, as soon as this comes, the controller sequencer halts the process. The signal is passed. As you can see, however much we move the clock now, nothing is going to happen. So this was the explanation of the uh, SAP One computer through the implementation on circuit OS. You can see now we can reset it and uh, leave it and the uh, we leave it here.
and enable the clock, we can see the whole operation, uh, the whole uh, example being performed and the output being generated. Let's see here. In this. We can see the answer has been generated. So this was SAP 1 using CircuitWars. I hope you liked the video and enjoyed it. Thank you.